Hi. I uh, wanted to pick up with the book review from yesterday and mention one other one. Um, and that is this book, Smithsonian Institution Secretary Charles Doolittle Walcott by Ellis Yokelson down there in the lower right corner. Um, so Walcott is uh, famous mainly for being the um, person who discovered the Burgess Shale, which is an extraordinary fossil deposit in Yoho National Park in the Canadian Rockies. Um, Walcott was also the head of the U.S. Geological Survey, and um, he was also um, mainly the Smithsonian Institution Secretary. So that was the job that he held for, for the longest period of time and, and probably had the most influence um, in that role. So this is an exhaustive book. I don't know if you guys can see this here, get a sense of scale here. I'll put it next to my head so you get a sense of how thick it is. This is a really big, big book. Um, we're talking on the order of 530 pages uh, of dense text, you know, so I mean, we're talking pretty small font size and, um, you know, pretty intense text um, that basically, you know, covers Walcott's life and, and um, personal life and professional life. Basically, one of the things that allowed this book to be written was that Walcott, when he was alive, he kept um, a daily diary. And this wasn't particularly detailed, like a paragraph every day, sort of. These are the four or five things that I did today. And uh, so that allowed Yokelson, the biographer, to really create a detailed picture of Walcott's life. And Yokelson is um, apparently the type of author to, uh, when faced with the choice between editing things down to some sort of pithy story and including all the details, whether you really need them all or not, will opt, opt for the latter. Um, so uh, so the book, it sometimes feels a little bit laborious because there's just all this stuff included about, you know, Walcott going to the dentist again and then going back to the dentist the next day, you know, and it sort of jumps around. Like he had this appointment and he had this appointment, then he went back to the dentist. And it's just, you know, it, it could have really used some, some editing, I think. Um, that being said, I really enjoyed reading it um, because... I feel a certain kinship with Walcott being uh, a DC resident and um, having visited the Burgess Shale this summer, having visited Walcott's grave um, earlier this year, and um, and of course really appreciating the institution that he built in the Smithsonian. Um, you know, this is one of the major reasons that I'm a, a scientist today is because I was able to grow up in proximity to such an extraordinary um, collection of, of natural objects. Um, and the other thing that's really kind of cool about it is you get perspective on things that Walcott's not necessarily as famous for. And some of those include things like um, his extraordinary um, advocacy for aviation and building the agency that essentially became the um, uh, National Aeronautic and, and Space Administration, NASA, um, and political machinations, the National Academy of Science, so for, for me, as sort of somebody who's part of the Washington science scene, um, you know, you, you know, even though my role here is, of course, far, far more peripheral than Walcott's, um, there's a lot of affinity that I felt for the story. So it might not appeal to, say, a geophysicist who has no interest in paleontology, who lives, you know, off in California or something like that. But for somebody in my position, it was a, it was a neat book to read. So um, I recommend it uh, for people like me. Thanks.